Well, hello there. This is Peril, and it's been quite a long time since I've uh, done anything at all with um, good old Q2. Now, I've been messing with something that I had a concept for when, I don't know, just one random day, I guess. Um, has no name or anything. This is just uh, APR Q2 1.3, 1.20, what was it, 1.21, 1.121, I think it is. The one that Jay Dolan did, anyways. Um, it's based off of that, and i just been doing some tweaks, and one of the, one of the tweaks that I did actually was, uh, to the lighting. I had always felt that there was, uh, more that could be done with the lighting system in Quake 2, so I've been messing with that a little bit, and I actually came up with an interesting way of handling lighting, um, in the engine, and this is, uh, s still the way it is, it's still, you know, I haven't messed with any of the GL stuff, um, although I did find that, actually, if you're experiencing issues with um, APRQ2 at all, I'd recommend you disable uh, the multi-texturing, because it actually causes an incredible amount of slowdown compared to uh, non-multi-texturing. I, I guess it's just, I don't know. Um, I'd, I'm thinking of also, just me just messing with the engine a bit, I'm going to split up... Um, uh, split up the, the, the engine itself into like a, a client game, sort of like EGL did, and um, I don't know what else I'm going to do from there. It's mostly just for experimentation, just for, for my sake. And I might try to make this engine uh, completely uh, GL 4.0, which will be re really interesting because I have to make a whole batch system. Anyways, um, yeah, so the lighting system. Uh, it, it's a bit hard to, to test outside because... I don't actually have any sort of skylight implemented. Uh, the way the uh, RAD engine handles lighting uh, outside is, is kind of interesting because there's actually like, there's lights hidden up there. Um, I've had my, I wish I had the light debug still implemented, but there's lights up there and not lights, but the sky itself has a light value and it shines down on the ground here. So I haven't implemented anything like that yet, but I'm going to at some point. But it does affect lights, uh, any lights that are on the map, as in actual light entities, which are, they sh I guess they technically should have been stripped out of the map, the ones that aren't triggerable, but they're still in there. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that no BSP uh, tools actually took them out because they're, they're used in here to, to, for, for light calculations. And I also take lights, uh, services that emit light, and um, I actually get light off of them too. So like these lights, for instance, there's actually, there's a light in front of it and a light generated from that, which is weird. Uh, I wonder if this was one of the maps that maybe was done before that or something, I don't know. Anyways, so as you can see, it's, it's a bit hard to tell from this area here especially, but the lights on um, entities and everything else, the light is now calculated based on the distance between the light itself uh, the face that it's shining to, and and e each vertex. So this is actually, in a way, it's sort of like perpixel lighting, but it's actually done on a vertex basis. And I'll be honest, it looks very convincing. Like, see, watch as the blaster bolt goes by. It affects D lights too. Here, I'll, I'll set the time scale down here to uh, 0.1, so you can see. If you watch when the light goes past the shells, for instance, you'll see it actually. It it doesn't light up the face in front of it when the bolt behind it, and it actually looks fairly convincing. It's obviously not as good as per pixel lighting, uh, for many reasons, but, see what I mean there? And it also affects, say, like, the gun in my hand, you'll see as I turn, the, uh, the different lights in the area affect... Uh, the, that light up there is affecting my gun, the front of it, and now the back. It actually started as an experiment just for the gun, because I noticed, especially with the original Quake 2 engine, uh, the light was from one fixed direction, and it snapped to um, their quantized array of 256 normals, and I really didn't like that. But as I built on it, I found that it could be extended to anything in the world, really. And uh, it's it looks really really convincing. I, I was actually really surprised at how convincing it looked. See, like if you look here, for instance, uh, there's a light right here. It's approximately here, 
and there's actually like eight of them that go all the way around around here and they're shining down but there's no light below it so you see that the bottom of the the bottom of my gun in my hand too is darker I pick there's actually some weapons that show this off better um, but the bottom of the, the grenades The way I've got it set up right now is there's a max, um, a maximum of 128 light sources uh, can affect an entity. Um, my initial test had 16, but there's so many lights that are clustered together in the way uh, the the BSP split apart. If uh, like you know you do show tris, and the way they're split, um, if I can show some good examples here, maybe maybe those big lights on the wall. Uh, no. But anyways, the way some of these are split up, because uh, the surface has a light on it. Wait, I know what I'll do. There's actually, the water gives off light. Oh, wait, the water doesn't split, that's right. But anyways, yeah, there's some places that there's just lights clustered together. Uh, the water actually has lights, there's no skylight here. But the water actually has lights on top of it, which is interesting. I don't know why they'd really do that, but... So you can see as I go past the light there's one right here you can actually tell where the light is coming from which is interesting see it's coming from my now it's on my left you see the right below the handle of the super shotgun there you'll see the it lights up a bit there I turn right and the lights gonna aim at the right side and uh, yeah so let's go underwater here this is a cool spot I like the way the gun shines here oh, those two lights above here just let me go up here <laughs> See, the light, the, the biggest light here is actually coming from the water. And there's some colored lights here that shine off. And actually, the light color does affect, uh, see, look, it's more bluish here, and over here it's more reddish. And it actually does change the color of the light as it affects you. Let's go to, um, let's see, what map has some good colored lights? Uh, maybe bunk one. Updated. So I can show you maybe how the monsters are affected by it. So he's gonna walk past the light here. I should have blaster bolt. No, I need someone that's in a darker area. Did I hit him? That's weird. Hey buddy. Okay, here's see look, here's some here's a good one. These guys something uh, the real gun makes sense. yeah see like there's a nice blue light for you see how it only affects the side that the, the real gun shot on the BFG makes some interesting lights too actually it's a bit hard to see I also interpret the light ramp that happens when it explodes which looks a lot better that way let's open this up I oh, hear some nice dark guys too He's got no light. Oops! Like no light around him. I'll let him light up the guys. Actually, I actually have no way of turning it off, so I can't show you what the old light system looked like. I'll probably add a trigger for that just so I can probably compare a little easier. But um, sh I don't want to show you. See how it goes past is kind of like his helmet. But yeah, this is, uh... I was actually surprised at how fast this ran. Um, considering how many friggin' light sources there are. And right now, there's actually no no culling for them. Like, um, this guy here, whenever when he's being rendered, he's actually checking every light in the map. Even the ones that are, no, like, you know, all the way... I'm turn GL Shotris on here. Even the ones that are like, uh, what's this, Arno call? No, that's what I want. No vis, that's what I want. No? Or does that only disable the vis? What's the command that... I can 
can't even remember anymore. Uh... But anyways, even the lights that are like way at the end of the level are still checking to see if he's close enough. So I could actually make this faster by uh, sorting all of the lights in the uh, the PVS that they're in, and then doing it that way. <laughs> It's a nice berserker, I can show some lights off. Now, of course, there's still a lot of improvements that could be made to the system. Um, there's no support for spotlights at the moment. Uh, so, that's what I'm going to do with the skylight, is make them into spotlights. Uh, and have them shine, you know, whatever direction they're aiming. Ooh, that's actually a really good one right here, because there's a light right behind him. So it only shines on the faces that are like facing the light, which is over here. There's another one. He's got a light in the front, but the back of him is completely dark because the light's not facing that way. So I guess this is just kind of to show you that you don't need shaders per se uh, to do... I wouldn't say realistic, but a, a good looking light system. Actually, let's see if this guy... No, it's too, too bright. I was going to say... I want to see if that the, the light mixed with the but it doesn't there's still some issues to, to to work with for instance i don't handle um flashing lights yet which is actually easy to do i just don't have it set up that way um the color mixing is a bit off like there's a white light here somewhere or there's a bunch of them even it might be right here or so and it's kind of consuming the light of, of him, and the red light behind him doesn't actually affect his color that much because of it. But also because... The, I don't know if there's actually a red light here, or if it's this surface here that's emitting the light. But surface lights are, are handled a little differently because... I don't exactly understand. I, like, I even looked through the source of QRAD, and... It's weird, like these lights here, some of them have a value, like intensity of 10,000, literally. And I don't know, like, if I actually set it that way, it lights up the entire map, you know. I, it's just weird, I don't understand how that calculation kind of plays into it. But as you can see, I mean, look at this. It actually looks really good. So yeah, I'll, I'll probably release this engine at some point. I mean, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm not intending to. This isn't a come back into the community or whatever. I'm not. You know, I've got, I've got a whole slew of other things to work on. It's just this is. I just had an idea and I thought, hey, I'll go with it and see what happens. And you know, I, I kind of like the way it turned out. Oh, what's this? See, there's a nice blue light in this area. Oh, there's a, there's a yellow light. So you can see the covered light affects the gun too. Is that always there? I never noticed this in this part of the map. Is this a secret? Oh, no, it's just okay. I was gonna say, geez, that was a secret I never even would have known. There's some red lights. Um, see, this is what I mean by the intensity. Like, these lights here, there's no lights down here, but this water. The, the red light off it has a really high intensity and like it even shines up here you know it, it's just I guess maybe I just had to play with the color mixing algorithm a little bit because the big white lights that are point lights kind of they, they almost eat up the uh, and maybe that's all it is maybe it's because I'm treating them as point lights and they should be spot lights maybe that's what it is but you can see the red the red hue rate, especially right here, you see it affects the, uh... So yeah, it's uh, just a cool experiment. Um... That's it.